Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Ashley and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about some tips when you're developing your curriculum. So the first tip that I have is to do a monthly curriculum versus a weekly curriculum. So this is what works for me. Again, I know a lot of people do a letter, color, number, and shape every single week and it's different every single week. I just personally feel like it moves really quickly. So the purpose of us having a curriculum is for the kids to learn it. And sometimes learning a color, number, shape, and letter every single week for the kids is a lot. If you think about it, that's four letters a month, four numbers a month, four shapes a month, and four colors a month. And again, not every kid is gonna get it quickly. I personally had kids in the past where they would get it like the first three days, but there are some kids that don't really, really, really get it in a week. By the end of the month, they should know it. And again, purpose of us having a curriculum is for them to learn it. I also feel like it takes off of our workload as daycare providers if we're doing the same letter, color, number, shape because you don't have to prepare every single week. Like you don't have to take out new cards every week. If you guys are doing flashcards with your kids, you don't have to erase your board and redo it. Like little things like that, it might sound like, oh, that's pretty easy. Like I can just do it weekly, but it adds up and it does take a lot of time. And then you can have kids that are absent some days of the week. If you had a month where you're doing the same thing, they can make up work, like make up crafts and stuff like that and still learn. So that's just me personally. I just recently, not recently, but like maybe for like the past year, I started doing the monthly things. I used to do one a week. Then I started to do it one every two weeks. So we would have the same curriculum for two weeks, but I still felt like it was moving fast. So I just decided to do it for the month. And ever since I started doing it for the month, I feel less overwhelmed as a provider. So I do monthly curriculums and maybe that might be something that you should look into doing too. The second tip is to spread activities throughout the week. So theme your days. So when I first started my daycare, I felt like I needed to paint with the kids, color with the kids, trace with the kids, do a gluing activity with the kids, everything, every day. So I was super overwhelmed because I had to have like at least six to seven activities every day for the kids, which is a lot of ink, a lot of paper, and then sometimes kids wouldn't come a, a certain day. So if they came the following day, they had to do 14 sheets because seven a day, that's an example. But you get what I'm saying? It becomes a lot. So I took a step back and I was like, how can I make sure that my kids are doing these activities, but I as a provider am not overwhelmed. So I started to theme my days. So what I mean by that is, this is an example, this is not how I do it. But for Mondays, you can do coloring activities. So all you're gonna be focusing on is coloring activities. Then on Tuesday, you could do painting. So you take out your paint, you're painting. On Wednesday, you can do worksheets. So if you guys are doing the letter V, you can print out some worksheets that have like searching for the letter V or tracing the letter V or anything that's like a worksheet, matching activities, whatever it is, worksheets would be on Wednesday. Then on Thursdays, you can do a teacher-led craft. So I like to do a lot of crafts that have to do with like handprints and footprints because the parents really like them. And it takes a lot of time because you have to have the kids one by one so you can paint their hand and make different crafts. I hope that it makes sense. I hope you guys understand what kind of crafts I'm talking about. Um, I'll include some in the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But those are what I consider like a teacher-led craft because I'm doing majority of the work for that craft, if that makes sense. So that's what I would do on Thursdays. And then on Friday, we can do watercolor paint or we can do a cut and glue activity. So theming your days really, really, really helps. And ever since I started to theme my days, I feel way less of a workload. I'm not trying to prepare a million things every day for the kids because guys, again, us as daycare providers, we have so, so many things that we have to do. It's a lot to add doing every single activity every day. And it doesn't have to just be one activity. You can do two. So you can do painting and coloring on Monday. You could do gluing and um, worksheets on Tuesday. Like it could be more than one theme, but try to separate it and try to break it up and spread it out. And I feel like it's gonna help you guys a lot. Number three is to prepare everything in advance. So for the month of May, we're doing a craft and it's basically where I'm gonna paint the kid's hand, we're gonna put it on the paper, and since the number of the month is five, we're gonna label the fingers one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. So they're gonna do like a hand craft. So what I did is I, in advance, prepared the hand craft sheet. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but at the top it says I have five fingers, and then it has the name of the child at the bottom. So this is already ready. I prepared it in advance. So all I gotta do the day that this is on my Schedule is pull this out, paint their hand, put it on the page, hang it up to dry, and that's done. So I like to prepare everything in advance. If there's anything that you have to cut out for the kids, cut it out now, don't wait till the day of, because again, it's gonna add to your workload. So 
Just do everything in advance and prepare everything in advance. And if you don't prepare everything in advance, it's gonna sometimes unmotivate you and you guys already know that being a daycare provider, this is a job where you need to motivate yourself because you don't have like a coworker or a boss telling you to stay motivated. So you might not just wanna do that craft at all and you're just gonna put it to the side and you won't get it done. So preparing everything in advance is gonna work into your favor as well. So number four is to organize yourself. Use a map, use a checklist, use a chart, get monthly binders, organize yourself because whenever everything is more organized, it's more easy for you as a daycare provider. So I have these daycare maps or these maps and this one is for the week of May and this is for the first week. So I hope you guys can see it. I'll probably get a close up of it, but it has every day of the week. Mm, let me see if I can do this real fast. Okay, so if you guys can see, it has every single day of the week, and then it has what we're doing for reading, fine motor, gross motor math, art and sensory, and music and movement. So <clears throat> I have these sheets, they come blank, I just go ahead and I fill them in, and then I put them inside of these plastic covers, and then next year, if I wanna do the same theme, I have it already ready and I can use these. So this is for week one, I'm still currently planning this month, so I will be doing week two, week three, week four. And then again, everything that I need for this week is already planned and I already have the sheets that we're gonna be using for the curriculum that month. So we have our matching sheets, the number is five, we're gonna be doing body parts, they're gonna be cutting and gluing. So I have, again, everything prepared in advance. So again, organizing yourself with charts, monthly binders, all of those things are really gonna help you when it comes to actually teaching and having everything ready for your students and yourself. And then the last thing that I have when it comes to curriculum is laminate everything sometimes it's expensive to laminate things because the laminating sheets and you gotta buy a laminator and stuff like that which if you're gonna laminate your things i would recommend buying a machine and the sheets it's way cheaper than going to like office depot or wherever for them to do it for you so i would just say invest in that the laminators are like 30 bucks i'll link the one that i use down below and then you get the laminating sheets which is like 15 dollars for 100 but invest in laminating stuff the only reason why i say that is because right now for example, in the month of May, I'm planning my curriculum. If I laminate everything and I have everything for that curriculum ready, if I wanna use the same thing next year, I still have my materials, I still have my cup, my flashcards, anything that I make and that I laminate, I can use for the following year and it just is the best thing to do. I don't plan on stopping daycare anytime soon and I have my curriculums behind me and I know that I'm gonna be able to use them in the future. So those are the tips that I have when it comes to developing your curriculum. These are obviously steps to do before you start making your curriculum. I am gonna be doing a video on how I do my curriculum. Um, I, don't, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do like a camera like facing down so you guys can see like how I plan everything but that's basically what I do and I hope that these tips were helpful for you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you guys have not already and I will see you guys in my next video.